Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 28th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan today took a look at a change made in the version 11 of the MITRE ATT&CK framework was released earlier this week and one of the changes here is that we now have an updated list of data sources that are relevant to detect a particular uh, technique. Of course, one way how the attack framework is often used is that you're looking at a particular technique being used by an adversary, and then you try to figure out how to detect a use of this particular technique in your environment. That's exactly where sort of these data sources come in, makes it now a little bit more straightforward to map a particular technique uh, to certain detection techniques that you may want to apply in order to detect exploitation. And talking about uh, TTPs, uh, Microsoft has released a nice report summarizing attacks that they have uh, observed in Ukraine so far since the war with Russia started. Now, there was a very uh, spur of activity in the very beginning, week one, they counted 22 incidents where an incident basically is an organization being affected, not an individual system. Since then, it has actually become a little more quiet with sort of uh, two to six uh, events uh, per week. Overall, the numbers aren't really all that bad in my opinion. They're fairly small, but they're very focused on government organizations, of course, and with that also on IT service providers, which of course are often used then in order to gain access uh, to, for example, government networks. There were, of course, also a couple of ICS related events, most recently, of course, Indus Destroyer 2. Another interesting part about this report is they sort of have some nice timelines comparing, for example, uh, military kinetic activity to cyber activity and also political events and cyber activity and how uh, the two sort of uh, match up and intertwine. The most visible part here was, of course, the wipers that were used to just destroy data, but there was also some data exfiltration happening as well as sort of just some tooling reconnaissance and such. So uh, some of these other activities may just not be as visible. So there may be more of it that yet has to be discovered. And sticking with Microsoft here for a second story, the uh, Microsoft 365 Defender research team released a blog post with details regarding two different vulnerabilities in Linux that allow for privilege escalation. Affected here are uh, desktop systems and the vulnerabilities uh, combined uh, referred to as Nimbus Pwn essentially take advantage of Dbus. Dbus is a message bus system that's used uh, in Linux in order uh, to basically send communication messages and these messages are often used by low privilege users to, for example, invoke functions that act as root. So, for example, things like uh, reconfiguring networks and the like. And, uh, well, uh, that's exactly where things are going wrong here. And via race conditions and uh, symlink exploits and the like, it's possible for a normal user to execute code as a root. The vulnerabilities have been addressed in the respective systems. So update and of course, as always, these privilege escalation vulnerabilities just don't seem to go away. So uh, it's always something that you kind of have to assume that you are vulnerable to some kind of privilege escalation uh, vulnerability, no matter what operating system you're on. And then we have yet another problem with NPM, and this time it's not sort of typo squatting and the like, but really something to make exploits like typo squatting work better. It's a fairly simple uh, vulnerability, actually, and it has been addressed in the NPM system. It was possible to add anybody as a maintainer for a package without actually asking for their consent. And... 
At first, it doesn't really sound like uh, such a bad thing. I can add you as a maintainer. Of course, with that, I better trust you because you now have access to my packages. But if you're never notified of the fact that you are a maintainer of my package, I can use this to essentially uh, make people trust my package by adding well-respected individuals within the NPM community as a maintainer to my package. So if I now have a typo squatting package and it uses the same maintainer as the real package, then of course it becomes much more likely to actually be installed. Also, I could use this to defame a well-known maintainer and with that uh, basically have people distrust some other packages that they may use that are created by the same maintainer. Pretty interesting vulnerability. And like I said, it has been patched now. If you invite someone to be a maintainer for a package, they now have to approve the request. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.